are doing, Mike Bradley? I hope you are doing well as always. Richie Sambora. I want to talk today about the legend that is Richard Stephen Sambora, the guitar player from Bon Jovi, the powerhouse that is the Sambora. The Sambora. Um, I've been wanting to talk about Richie for a while on my channel. I have mentioned him uh, certainly in no, in passing and uh, and said how he was a big influence on me in the early days of my guitar playing. But with this new series I'm doing, what I've learned from da 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 da, I thought it'd be a great chance to uh, really dive in to Richie's guitar playing and what I learned from it and picked up from it and, you know, what crafted me as a guitar player. So at the beginning there, you saw me do the legendary Wanted Dead or Alive solo. And it is a legendary solo. As, as I mentioned in my previous video uh, on the Larry Carton solo, is that it's a song in itself. And I think any great solo, really, you know, you can hum the solos. You can hum it. And with Wanted Dead or Alive, you know, you can't, that is a solo you can't improvise. If you're doing, you know, a, a function gig, a pub gig or something like that, you can't just improvise that solo. You need to certainly be in the ballpark of it. So let's just quickly talk about that solo. And I, like I say, I want to go into Richie's playing and his influence as well. Um, so in that solo, it's got, you know, it's pentatonic scales, right? He's, he's doing D minor pentatonic, but he's actually starting on some octave. <laughs> And then there he's kind of, you know, shape three of your D minor pentatonic. And he's, you know, first of all, I should say I am using a Telecaster, not a Strat or, you know, some kind of humbucker equipped guitar. Uh, that is because um, in the year, in this particular time, May 2020, um, <laughs> I haven't got all my guitars here as we're in lockdown still. So, uh I ideally would like to use a Les Paul or something like that, but to be honest, this telly's doing a pretty good, you know, job of it. You know, this back pickup's great, and I've got um, my amp is a Fender Supersonic, got a bit of overdrive on it. This is just the amp. Then I'm kicking in an 805, Seymour Duncan 805 pedal. Reverb from a new neighbour, Merce, and then I've got now a bit of delay. I had it at the beginning, so. A bit of that, but just for demonstration, I'm gonna turn this off. Um, so yeah, that is why I'm using a Telecaster, not like a Super Strat or a Les Paul or something like that. Anyway, so yeah, he's got this. He's kind of in shape three there of your D minor pentatonic. So he's got these octaves. And then he's doing a cool little run, which he uses a lot in his playing. Now, I'm kind of taking influence from a lot of the live playing I've watched over the years of Richie. Uh, so there's just a cool little run. He's kind of mixing hammer-ons and picking. So, so you can kind of hammer on the third string and then kind of pick the second and first. It's all shape two of D minor pentatonic. Bending up a tone. And then this is where you get the Richie vibrato, that big wide rock vibrato. Now that's a big part of my playing, uh, especially when I'm really going for it. I got that all from Richie. Uh, I would watch uh, and I encourage you all to you know, it's either be on YouTube or you know be old school and buy it. Bon Jovi live at London in 1995, I think it is. It's on the These Days tour. And that was the second video I got of Bon Jovi. I'll talk about the first one in a minute. Um, but I would watch that and the other one so much. <laughs> Not necessarily with a guitar, but I would just absorb it. And I would absorb <laughs> that big, wide rock vibrato, what Richie does fantastic, especially back then. Oh, 
Oh, now if you put a bit of delay on. You get that, you know, it's, you know, a little bit messy there here and there, but you get the idea of the attitude, you know, and you're really kind of killing it. Um, you know, Richie is a rock blues guitar player. I imagine as well he's influenced by Stevie Ray. Uh, I know he's a massive Clapton fan, uh, a big Johnny Winter fan, Jimi Hendrix, obviously, Jimmy Page. You know, he, uh, he was born in, what, 59, 1959, so he, I think he started playing when he was 12. So, you know, right at the beginning of the 70s. So he's growing up with those amazing blues guys, you know, Johnny Winter, Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, you know, the Allman Brothers. You know, those guys are his influence. And you can kind of hear that, especially when you get into mid-90s Sambora playing. So in that One Dead or Alive, he's got that going on. And then he's doing on the original and live you know he does it lots of pinch harmonic and he's going back to shape three d minor pentatonic but there he's putting a chord in he's putting a power chord you know he's done a d going to a c and then back to a d again you know so he's again he's playing to the song he's not just noodling you know, all if you think of all the great Bon Jovi songs, all the solos in it, when they did solos, they don't really do solos anymore. But, um, you know, when you th if you think of One of Dead or Alive, to Living on a Prayer, to Bad Medicine, to I'll Be There For You, to Bed of Roses, to Dry County, which is a fantastic solo in Dry County, um, it's all playing for the song. And that's what Rich is doing there. You know, he's aware, no, it's three chords, it's D, C add nine and a G, all right? So uh, he's using, he could have used D major pentatonic. Basically it's a, you know, those chords do not come from the key of D major. Uh, it's, it's a mixolydian kind of thing going on there. Don't worry about that too much as a modal thing. I doubt Richie's thinking, oh, I'm playing in D mixolydian. He might, I don't know. But uh, that's where it's coming from. So we could have done D major for that kind of. Would have been a little bit Allman Brothers kind of type stuff going on. But he's done D minor pentatonic, but he's aware of the chords, you know. He's aware of that. And then the rest he's kind of. He's kind of all in that shape three. And he's using that F note as kind of, he's landing all those phrases, he's finishing on, on an F note, uh, which is quite cool, you know, and F's a big part of D minor, you know, think of a D minor chord, the F note is in it. Uh, and then you've got this, you know, okay. brilliant. Brilliant, it's such a well-crafted solo, you know. I expect he kind of, as he was writing a song and recording, he probably had the idea in his head and went with it, you know. But like I say, Richie is a, you know, he's a songwriter, uh, you know, as well as a fantastic singer, a fantastic guitar player, he's a songwriter. So all his solos are beautiful, no, on the songs, on the records, are beautifully crafted and tailored for that song. You know, all the notes, count. So as I mentioned, Richie is a big, big influence on me. And uh, when I was about 14 years old, I discovered, can, I, no, I was certainly aware of Bon Jovi, but I discovered uh, Bon Jovi and Richie's playing properly. And I remember I got a video called An Evening with Bon Jovi. And it was from the Keep the Faith era. You know, I think they just released Keep the Faith. And you know, so what's this, 1992, 1993, something like that. And I'm getting that video, and bear in mind, this is, you no, know, for me, is the mid to late 90s. I started playing guitar in 1996, you know, so this is probably about 1998, something like this, I discovered this when I was a kid. And you know, so this is before YouTube or anything like that. So for me to access, you know, other guitar players was via, you know, listening, you know, music, channels, MTV, VH1 would actually play 
<laughs> proper music, you know, uh, or, you know, magazines or, you know, buying CDs, someone telling me something about a play and I going out and buying it. So I got this video and it changed everything for me. Sam Bora on that was on it. And, uh, you know, I mean, now listening back to it, uh, it's a much more processed, you know, still 80s sound. He just got his Fender Strat, he's got his Strats going, um, and he's got his big hair, you know, the big kind of massive mullet-esque hair. Um, but he's got his, you know, Strat with the humbucker. I think a Seymour Duncan, Jeff Beck in the bridge, I think. Um, so yeah, very processed, very chorus sound. But I remember there's a song on there called Little Bit of Soul. And I used to just rewind that and watch it back time and time again. It's, you know, it's so much attitude. And all he's doing is kind of just going from, you know, shape is in A, it was in A, I think. I think it's A7. I think it's that. So he's kind of in shape one, he's kind of a little noodle, then he goes up high, you know, but it's the attitude of his playing. I'll put a clip in now. So Richie's a big pentatonic boy, but he also mixes in others, you know, he'll put in a bit of the Dorian mode, you know, so when you think of a game, One of Dead or Alive, at the beginning, it'll come out and, you know, with, a, with his double neck acoustic, I think in the 80s, he had a triple neck, he had a mandolin, a 12 string and a 6 string, and, you know, so if you've got um, kind of a, a low D going on. Richie would be playing a lot of the B and the E note, which is coming from D Dorian. So he knows he knows what he's doing there a little bit, you know. So again, if I Tonic scale going on, a little bit of you know Dorian and the natural minor scale coming on, and another big thing what Richie uh, would do and influence me on is the use of six. Now again, One Dead or Alive, which is probably up there one of the most famous riffs of all time, that is all sixth intervals. If you don't know what a sixth is uh, or an interval or a sixth is, if you've got you know if you use the key of C for example, C D E F G A B and the octave C. Uh, if we, we measure it from the root note, so C being the one, C to D will be a second interval, C to E will be a third interval, C to F will be a fourth interval, etc. So in the case of the key of C, the sixth interval will be A, an A note. So now you do an interval. So with One Dead or Alive, He's all these intervals, which is really, really cool. So Richie uses six all over the place. I remember in the song Just Older from Bon Jovi's Crush album, uh, he does this. Uh, he'll do them all over the place. All the stuff like that. He'll be mucking around with those sixth intervals. 
And, you know, again, it's melodic. You know, intervals now are bit, lots and lots of people would know. If you think of the Neo Soul stuff, um, intervals are a big, big thing to do. Sixth intervals have been going on for ages in music. You think Brown Eyed Girl. You know, that's all your sixth interval. You've got a B note, and we're going to a G. One, two, three, four, five. Six notes apart. Six notes apart, I should say. So Richie uses a lot of six. They're in there a lot, you know, in his riffs, in his playing, and as well as six, octaves. He uses a lot of octaves. Again, you know, with Wanted Dead or Alive, this beginning bit, that brilliant sound there, and actually that song Just Older I was talking about. He's using that idea there, you know, and, and octaves are great because they just make the sound bigger. You use, it's the same notes, an octave is the same note, eight notes apart. I've got a D and I've got a D. So like with Wanted Dead or Alive, he's got that. Now you could just do the one note, you know, the low note. Or the high note. It's cool. But having those boat, that big bottom and the higher sounds. It's wonderful. <laughs> now another big thing which was certainly influenced in my early years of playing with Richie's tone. And again, I talk about that Wembley gig from 95. I, th I think it's 95, mid 90s. So obviously I had that video, the, the Keep the Faith era sound which is cool you know very kind of 80s compressed lots of chorus lots of delay so if you fast forward about three years after that to about 1995 and richie switched to these fender tone masters and i remember on that gig he had a wall of fender tone masters and the tone was incredible he's still got that super strat going and he's playing a lot of les pauls on that gig but I, that kind of that blues rock tone is what i've always liked um, you know that it's warm, but still kind of cutting. And like I say, you, you know, he used a lot of humbuckers back then. But also would switch to. Uh, I haven't got a Strat, unfortunately, here. But he did play a lot of Telecasters, actually. But we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but you know, I remember him wanted Dead or Alive at the end of the solo, and you know, he's probably got a lot of gain going on. So he's full tilt. He's that on the bridge pickup, and he'll kind of. warm neck pickup sound you know you might notice I just backed the volume a little bit just to clean it up I remember kind of kind of picking that up those these little nuances I would pick up in my you know teenage years of you know analyzing always playing and that again that wide vibrato and I expect that's where uh, the facial expressions come you know when you when you do those big wide vibrato it's cool like that but you won't <laughs> you want you want the sex face to come out, you know, but uh, adds to the tone. So in that mid 90s there, you know, I think he still had his rack, he had uh, the Bob Bradshaw switching system and whatnot. And then enter into the 2000s and he got rid of the humbucker in his strats. And, he's, and he kind of started having relic strats going on. Three single uh, coil pickups. He does have though, um, there's a button, um, and like an active boost, like and it pushes the mids, a bit like what Clapton strats have. But he had a button to engage it, so I imagine he still wanted his tone control and stuff. So you'd push this button to uh, activate a mid boost. It's all about the mids. Don't cut those mids, boys and girls, um, in your in your when you're setting up your amp. So we had his single coils, and like I said, he would use a lot of Telecasters as well. Um, I'll be there for you. I think from the Crush tour he would use his Telecaster and someday I'll be Saturday night as well. And that's got your, all your sixths going on again. And he has some kind of open string. 
going on. I can't remember now. That sounded like Rush, so not that. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. But um, he would use a lot of Telecaster, you know, and a Telecaster net pickup has a different... <laughs> Has a slightly different sound to the strap. Not quite so, mm, you know, it's a little bit more mellower. And then of course the bridge pickup going on. So, you know, for something like. You know, he kind of live, I think on the record it's a, probably a 60 strap. Um, but live, he, he would use the Telecaster quite a lot. And his tone was much more stripped back in those early 2000s. He was using a Marshall DSL 2000, uh, which I ended up getting as well. And he used a Wah Wah and a Boss SD1 overdrive pedal. And that was the first overdrive pedal I ever got. And that was because of Richie Sambora and also because of Phil Hillborn. <laughs> and if you're in the UK, Phil you know, writes for uh, Guitar Techniques magazine, big part of Guitar Techniques and Guitarist magazine. Uh, and I remember emailing him about a Boss SD1 when I was about 17 years old. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Richie was a big ag advocate of the Boss SD1 overdrive pedal. And I remember getting that, because Richie had it. I remember getting GHS Boomer strings because Richie used GHS Boomer strings and it's be an advert of him doing it. So I, you know, he was my guitar hero, you know, from when I was a kid, from 14 to probably 1920. I was all about Sam Bora, you know, and then other players come in your life and, you know, you absorb it. But, you know, he's a big foundation of what, has made me the guitar player I am today, you know. Um, such a huge Sambora fan. He had those two, or oh, he's done three solo albums now, but at the time at the member, Stranger in This Town and uh, Undiscovered Soul. And Stranger in This Town, again, it's all, it starts off on those six. <laughs> six again. You know, so he's got, he loves the sixth. So start putting that in your playing, you know, you can get some cool kind of sounds up. And lastly, one thing I should mention Richie Sambora really did bring, well, and John, you know, Richie and John really did bring back the acoustic guitar to rock music. You know, if you think back in the 80s, and it was, was this 1986, 87, I think, Slippery and Wet came out, and that would have been, you know, full on hair metal, full on hair metal going on. And they came out with Wanted Dead or Alive, and they brought that acoustic guitar back. You know, and that's probably the, the big Led Zeppelin, Jimmy Page influence coming out there. You know, if you think Led Zeppelin 3, very acoustic, and Led Zeppelin loved their folk and would do a lot, you know, go into California and all that kind of stuff, would do a lot of acoustic stuff. And then, it, you know, that's in the 70s, and it kind of disappeared, lots of heavy rock and, you know, load of guitars, all that kind of stuff, which we love, electric guitars. But, you know, Richie's brought back, Richie brought back, the acoustic and brought back double necks <laughs> to rock guitar definitely you know he loves a double neck that boy you know he's got his like I say triple neck ovation at one point double neck ovation he had double neck uh tailors uh not sure he had a double neck martin not sure i've seen he had a double neck prs at one point then he, he sold it and he had double neck strats lots of them a double neck telly again in have a nice day you know so he loved the double neck <laughs> <laughs> but he brought the double neck back to rock and he certainly brought back acoustic back to rock. So I can't, you know, stress enough what a great underrated guitar player Richie Tambora is. And this is certainly what I've learned from him. I've learned all this kind of stuff over, you know, God knows 20 years, you know. So uh, do check out some more Richie. 
Uh, if you happen, no, if you obviously you've heard of Richie Zambor, but do check out, especially the '90s stuff. Um, Any, the whole album of these days is incredible. You know that I think is Richie at his peak. So I hope you enjoyed this. You know what I've learned from Richie Zambora. Oh, what a name as well, it's such a cool name. Do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I love reading all your comments, it's uh, it's always good to read. Make sure you give this video a nice thumbs up as well because it really, really helps the channel. And if you'd like to check out more of me, go to my website, mikebradleymusic.com. And also, if you want to be really cool and get a Hope You Are Doing Well As Always t-shirt, a link will be in the description box below. And uh, get one and let me know when you get one, be good to see. Anyway, hope you're very good and well. I'll be Mike Bradley. I'll see you very soon. Mike Bradley signing out. Bye! The devil's on my side.